The scene before you was created in the previous video about procedural graphics. The sphere tracing technique known as ray marching was used to create it, and overall it looks pretty good considering that everything was created from scratch. But in this video we will make a breakthrough in terms of graphics, consider and apply popular methods for improving the visual component. These techniques will bring the graphics of the scene closer to an even more realistic perception. In short, let's try to bring it to the level of already advanced 3D graphics, which you can observe in modern realities, for example, when using various 3D graphics engines. And now the code from the previous video is presented but a little refactoring has been done. For convenience, the map function that finds the distance to objects and the get material function are moved to a separate file, these functions are included in the main shader file using the include directive. One more difference is that the color of the object is obtained through the get light function, and the render function is no longer a void type and now returns the final color value of the pixel, and also in the central place of the scene there is simply a red cube. So, if everything except the checkerboard floor is removed from the scene, then despite the application of the fog effect, a strong aliasing of the grating receding into the distance is clearly visible. The conspicuous ladder effect is usually eliminated by using anti-aliasing techniques. And since each pixel has a size, now the rays pass through the centers of their pixels, in the simplest case, anti-aliasing is implemented by casting more rays through sub-pixels, and then the average value of the obtained color values is found. Better anti-aliasing results are shown by the method when the rays do not pass through the centers of sub-pixels, but the rotation of their grating by a certain angle is used. We implement anti-aliasing based on the above method, then in the main shader file we will write a separate function for calculating the UV coordinates, but only taking into account the ray offset. The anti-aliasing function itself is easy to write by taking a separate vector with offset values, we form an offset using the swizzling operation and calculate the summing color of the pixel, which we divide by the number of rays 4. And as a result of such smoothing, the image no longer flickers like a broken mesh and is normally perceived by the eyes. I will also show the improvements made in a separate shader so that the difference at each step taken is clearly visible, in other words, we will learn everything in comparison. And now I would like to pay attention to the shadows in this project. Their contour is geometrically correct but they do not look natural, as a rule, there is always a penumbra component in life. Of course, if the light source is infinitely small in size, then we will get a shadow that we have already implemented. But in reality, light sources always have a certain size, and in this case, penumbras are already formed, similar to the one shown in the right image. To implement soft shadows, we will write a function that practically repeats the ray marching algorithm. We define a new variable for the size of the light source and we will also cast the ray in that direction, but at the same time at each step we will take into account that the amount of light is proportional to the ratio of the current distance to the scene to the distance traveled from the point P and multiplied by the size of the light source. It remains to correct the current code for calculating shadows and take into account that the shadow variable must be multiplied only by the components of the specular and diffuse light. Let's look at the result and as you can see the shadows are really soft, they give the image a more natural look and more realism for the whole scene. And again I propose to compare the result before the applied improvements and along with the current. An important part of any lighting model is ambient occlusion. This is a shading model that gives realism to the entire image, this is a kind of self-darkening of a surface point depending on the position of the objects surrounding it. Ambient occlusion is calculated by casting the ray not far along the normal, that is, several points are located in the direction of the ray, and the difference between two distances is found, the first is how far this point is from point P and the second is the distance to the nearest surface. Also, at each step, the selected attenuation coefficient is applied, and the total result of shading the point P is found from the sum of these calculations. Let's go back to the get light function to calculate the result of ambient occlusion, and I suggest looking at this shading model in its purest form. And here it is not difficult to notice that shading occurs where it was supposed to, and the degree of shading depends on the selected parameters when calculating ambient occlusion. Now let's multiply all the lighting components by the occlusion variable except for the diffuse component. Let's look at the whole picture, ambient occlusion is usually a shadow enhancer, gives it depth and is generally not applied to lighted areas. To finish with the lighting model, in addition, we calculate the light that is reflected from the illuminated objects, 
because in real life objects reflect part of the light, which in turn partially illuminates the nearest ones. Although this is not an essential component, it still makes a certain contribution to the realism of the entire scene as a whole. And now let's start considering one of the methods for applying textures to procedural objects called triplanar texture mapping. Its meaning is to get the color of the p-point based on the sum of the texture color values for the three planes separately. And let's analyze this method step by step, first, in the main program file load a test texture, assign a name to the uniform variable, and call the use method in the render method for the texture, indicating its location index. Go back to the shader and set the uniform variable with the same name. Now we can write a triplanar function, and first let's try to look at the texture mapping on the xy plane. And we will use this function when determining the material of the object in get material, and do not forget to assign a new ID to the cube. In the map function, if you look at the result, we see the texture overlay occurred on the desired plane, but the texture itself is not scaled relative to the cube. Therefore, it is necessary to define variables for the cube size and for its scale, and also output the coordinates to the texture coordinate space from 0 to 1 and then use these variables, in the get material function for the texture scale, and in the map function for the cube size. And now we can say with confidence that the texture is applied correctly but only for the xy plane. And to apply textures to all three planes, the color value must be multiplied by the corresponding normal to the plane on which we apply the texture. Textures on three planes are displayed correctly, with the exception of the cube planes where the normals are directed in the opposite direction, and in order to correctly display the textures on the remaining planes, it is enough to take the absolute value of the normal. And as a result, we have a textured cube, but not everything is so simple, let's say you wanted to do some manipulations with the object, for example, using separate functions for the cube, we will move it in space and, moreover, we will rotate it in every possible way. We use these manipulations in the map function, pass the time value to the shader and look at the result. And as is obvious, all the texturing of the cube immediately failed, because the same manipulations with the vector p must be carried out before using the triplanar function, but in addition, if there is rotation, then separately apply the rotate function to the normal. And in this way you can use different animations, move and rotate textured objects, but if you know another way, then write in the comments. So, using all the methods and techniques described, I textured all the objects and created a pedestal in the center of the scene, on which there is now a rotating sphere. But instead of the texture on the sphere, the color of its normals is displayed, frankly, such normals are not suitable for spherical objects at all, otherwise the texture will be greatly stretched. And usually the value of the normal is raised to a small power and normalized by the sum of its components, and for demonstration I will do this in the get material function. And as you can see it has become much better, and we can say this is the final touch related to the triplanar method of texture mapping. I want to say that this texturing method is great for organic and seamless textures. Bump mapping is probably one of the most spectacular methods in 3D graphics. It is a way to create the effect of a relief surface and is conditionally divided into true bump mapping, when the geometry of the object changes, and fake, when created by changing the normals. And by the way, to implement true bump mapping, we are all set. Let's write a function that, at a small distance from objects, will find the color value in the texture using the same triplanar method. We will take one value from the color, let's say on the red channel, and based on it we will calculate the bump value at this point. It remains only to assign bump factors for each object. To use this function we go to the map function, and at the stage when the distance to the object is calculated, we apply the bump value to it. It's just not entirely clear how to find the exact normal here, in other words, I did something close to the normal value. And as a result, we can see the effect of applying bump mapping in action, as expected, a realistic relief surface was formed. And if we apply a texture, the effect of bump mapping becomes many times more colorful. Let's apply bump mapping to the roof and walls, here you can already compare with what it was at the beginning of the video and what has happened now, the difference is huge and the work done has brought its results by making the graphics several levels more realistic. 
Again, this is not the limit and the ray marching technique is becoming more and more popular lately, a lot can still be optimized and improved.